Hey everybody! Today we are talking about something that may surprise you that we're bringing up, which is parenting in Denmark compared to in the United States. But to help us out, we have a special guest in the studio, Miss Annie Samples. And you may know Annie from TikTok and Instagram at Annie in Eventualen. And we are going to talk about parenting. Yeah, and probably one of the, and this is something that went viral on your channel, that's a difference here between Denmark and the U.S., which is whether or not you leave babies outside to sleep. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Everybody is so curious about this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, What's your Denmark? experience between the two? Well, um, I was definitely nervous to do it at first, that's mm. for sure. And when I lived in the U.S., um, you know, I had my kids on this, like, nap schedule, and they were, like, in their beds, and I would end up staying between the three kids. I would be stuck at home napping. I mean, literally all day long. Mm. It was just, like, playing musical cribs, essentially, <laughs> and that was my whole life, and now my kids... Well, I only have one napping kid, but she'll nap in the stroller. And it's like life can just continue to go on. You can get out of the house, do what you got to do, have a good time. And it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Is it partially um, convenience? Because maybe if they're already asleep, you yeah. know, you're out for a walk, they're asleep. You're not going <laughs> to no, exactly. risk waking them up. Yeah. Can you imagine having like a cozy bed on wheels oh, and you can just right? like, go about your day? Oh, and just that's. Be like, oh. That's yeah. the dream. Yeah. And even if it's cold outside, like they're bundled up to yeah. the nines. Yeah. Like so it's not bundled. like, yeah. yeah, it's. And the Danish climate does allow for. Yeah. For it's not too cold. It's, it's not, not too, cold. too hot. Sometimes it gets a little hot for yeah. a stroller nap, but mm. overall it's. Wouldn't work very... everywhere. You don't have like predators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's no coyotes. <laughs> there's no. <laughs> I get comments sometimes on that video or any video about it where they're like, aren't you worried about the wild animals? <laughs> like, like, yeah. I'm in a city. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The squirrels. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The, the crazy Danish squirrels. Yeah. Please. I wish I could get a closer look at them. They're so cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably couldn't do that in every part of Australia, but no. in Denmark. Please it, don't. It works nice. It, you just have like your common stroller spider in Australia, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Scary. Kangaroo. Oh, yeah. Is that the dingo? <gasps> yeah, dingo ate my baby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we don't want that. Yeah, no. no, no. Don't have to worry about that here. But one thing that seems um, somewhat universal to me, but maybe mm. is a different experience for you, is kind of like the, the hands-on and hands-off parenting. That seems to be a bit yeah. different. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, there's no helicopter parenting here. Yeah. And I love that. In the U.S., if you're not a he helicopter parent, you might be, like, looked at, like, as sort of negligent. You right. know what I'm saying? Really? Whereas here, they're like, girl, relax. And I love it. I don't have the capacity to be on top of all of these kids. Yeah. They don't need it. It gives them so much confidence. Um, and, yeah, now if I go to the U.S. and see parents being, you know, on top of their kids, it looks ridiculous. It looks ridiculous yeah. hmm. seeing like these parents like on a playground with their kids, like guiding them through. Oh, I'm God. like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, Ooh, let, yeah. let them figure it out. I've heard the term here, curling parents. Curling parents. I've that been called like, that before. F like changing the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like so that, that they don't uh, smooth. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. But I think it's nice to let the kids have a little more freedom, yeah. Yeah. learn by mistakes, falling down, discovery, that kind of thing. Yeah. I will yeah. say, one of the things that jarred me early after we moved here was seeing like pretty young kids like by themselves yep. on the metro and in the bus and buying candy yep. in the shop. Yeah. Those like, are my kids now. They're out there. You'll, you might see them out on the street. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I hope they're behaving themselves. You know? yeah, I don't yeah. know what they're doing out there, but uh, they're doing it and they they seem to make it home in one piece. <laughs> and it's part of the trust that like if something does go wrong, yeah. somebody will somebody step, will step in. If your I kid is lost, that. somebody's there. Oh my there. god! When I first moved here, my like mortal enemy was like the old Danish women that like correct you on the street. You uh, know, mm. I still don't love that, but you know what? <laughs> they are the backbone of society. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if something's going on, they're gonna yes. tell you yeah. about yeah. it. is gonna say yes. exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And um, I'm thankful for them. They, I attribute Denmark's safety to them. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Yes, it's not the police. It's the Brigittas and Pias on the street yeah. that make sure that God everyone gets home in one place. The Brigitte Brigade. The Brigitte Brigade. What are they so mad about? <laughs> right? I don't know, I don't know but it works. It keeps it's things working. going. Exactly. So go off, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Well, maybe one thing they're mad about that might be different is mm. just the, the use of curse words. And ah. I feel like as a kid, <laughs> you don't use curse words in the U.S. at all. Whereas yeah. here, I've never heard more F-bombs in my life than a school of 12-year-olds on the S-tone. Oh, it's crazy. And you'll like go to like a like a 
magazine or something, a normal <laughs> normal department store, and it's like playing the most obscene music you've ever heard in your yes. life. You're like covering your ears. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, it's just so normal. When you think about it, it's just not the native language, it, but in some ways it is. Right? You know, they everyone is speaking English, but something about like cuss words, it's okay. I, mean, I always struggle with that too, because sometimes I'm like, you do know the context. Yeah. You do know this yes. is not polite. Yeah, language. yeah, yeah. I we, it's very interesting. I was at like a kids. It was like the the signage for the event was like the number one kids event in Denmark, and they were playing like uh, a tribe called Quest, like completely <laughs> unedited. <laughs> okay, like just yeah. blasting that out there. And of course, that was like the one time my like conservative dad was here visiting me. <laughs> oh my god! Like I'm sorry, but have, yeah. have your kids picked that? Like that your kids curse uh, more than you think they would if you were I still think they probably do when they're not at home because sometimes one of them will come home and be like so and so said the F word today and they're like no I didn't I didn't he's lying like that kind of mm. thing I'm like listen just I don't want to hear it please hmm. just please just use it in a proper context you know because sometimes I hear these kids <laughs> using it in such an unhinged way use it <laughs> properly but also don't do it in front of me and please don't do it in front of the grandparents. Yeah, don't Ooh, take that yes. one home. That yeah. one's not no, gonna go over well in Texas. Go- if, you're, mm, if you're gonna curse, mm. then read somebody to filth. Right. Yeah, make yeah it, exactly. And make it, <laughs> make exactly. it worth exactly. it. Don't yes. disappoint me, child. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? I taught you well. <laughs> exactly, come on. That's what other major difference um, that I've noticed and in talking with some of my mm. other uh, friends who are American and parenting here is uh, sort of the outlook on over-the-counter medicine yeah. and things like that. Yeah, from Pedialyte uh, yeah. to even, uh, you know, children's Tylenol, things yeah. like that. Yeah, um, yeah. How have you adapted to that or what have you noticed differently there? I, I feel like I've adapted quite well in terms of the cold and flu medicine. Mm. But one thing that I really struggle with is that it's very common in the U.S. to give your kid melatonin oh. to get them to go to yeah. sleep. You know what I'm saying? Not all the time. Yep. But, you know, those nights your husband's traveling or for some reason they're just like jacked up like hot you know Wired. you guys know oh yeah kids can get a little crazy You're just like here we would call it their sleepy vitamins <laughs> <So> <laughs> i posted one time about how like i miss having that here that's there it's by prescription oh, only yeah. yes yes and it's got to be for a very severe case uh, i'm just not on board with it i think it's i think it's okay yeah hmm. but um you it know, is I'm wild. a law abiding a citizen a law abiding uh, citizen sure. here yes. in denmark yes yeah mm-hmm. it, it is wild that like melatonin is considered so heavily yeah. regulated. Yeah, mm. people like, were like, I don't see why you would ever need to, you know, give that. It's got all of these side effects. And I'm right. like, and I'm like, I like in, C- in CVS, it's literally in like the vitamin section in it the literally, M's. Like it's just right. there. <laughs> exactly, it's just a supplement. And, and it's, it's, it's not it's, regulated like that all over Europe. No, no yeah. it's, like, it's like, you know, magnesium, melatonin, exactly. niacin. And like, here's your kids' magnesium and your kids' melatonin. You know, yes. they like have it for certain age groups and stuff as well. And yeah, speaking of getting read to filth, I, I really heard it for <laughs> that mm. one, and that is okay. Yeah. That was your Danish mommy faux pas that yeah, you, you heard yeah, about. Yeah, 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 it is. But that's like going back to the simplicity and stuff. I yeah. in the comparison game, like a, a lot of the comparison game of moms in the U.S. is like, what supplements are you giving your kids? Oh, you know sure, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, what are you avoiding these medicines? Are you you know? And so, is it more than just the 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 Flintstone vitamins oh, these days? Mm. It is so unhinged and you've got oh. these, you know, then going back to the consumer culture of the U.S., there's all these like different little niche online brands and uh, stuff that you get your like subscriptions and stuff to. I just love the simplicity of like, I'm going to Apotech, I'm going to get the Apotech like chewable vitamin for yeah, my yeah. kids. That's Good what enough. they get. Mm-hmm. And that's it. You know, we're done for the day. They get a little fever. They've got some Panadol. It is what it is. It's all they need. It's all, I guess. So the next one I want to talk about is something that you posted in, in one of your uh, uh-huh. one of your videos. And I would have never thought of this being a major difference, but mm. you can probably explain this best. So the difference in PE or physical education mm. class or gym class between the U.S. and Denmark. Yeah. How different was that between oh the two? Well, did you guys shower after you went to Never. I was, no. We were always smelly. Like, we Literally. had the option to, but nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody Interesting. Did. We didn't even change clothes. Like, we were oh. just, like, riding. Oh, we had a gym uniform. Oh, that's Yeah, cute. yeah. We had to wear, like, mesh shorts and a t-shirt. Oh, like, that's cool. Yeah. But most people would just, would just change in and out of the gym yeah, uniform, that's but it. that's it. Yeah, so uh, they place a big importance on post-physical education hygiene here. Mm. Which is good. It's good. <laughs> yeah. I actually got to witness the shower rooms myself for the first time because they've always, obviously, why would I be allowed in there? But my son forgot his clothes one day, so I got to run him down in there. 
just a big shower room, just like you'd see in a swim hall. Yep. Mm. Boys and girls, fully stripped down. The U.S., that is just a lawsuit waiting to happen. Oh, my God, sure. yes. So many things. Yeah, you can barely enter a school without a, an uh, F- FBI yeah, clearance. Yeah. You literally Everything need an FBI clearance. Everything about that story is not yeah. okay. Right, yeah. it's so true. So, yeah. um, but I, I'm actually fine with it. Yeah. I'm on board for I appreciate that it, like, teaches about, it's normalizing the body. Yeah. It teaches yeah. the importance of hygiene. Yeah. teaches them how to keep track of their stuff in terms of, like, the clothes they're changing sure. in and out of. I don't think it would be a bad thing for American kids to learn early on not to be ashamed of their bodies. Yeah. And... Yes. <laughs> to keep them clean yeah. after physical exercise. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. on board for it. And I also say, like, I don't have to give them a shower after they get home that day. So it's right. really oh, good, great. Yeah. yeah, so it saves <laughs> me a little time as well. <laughs> Another one, and, uh, you know, at school and with their, their school friends that may be a little bit different mm-hmm. is, like, sort of parties, birthday parties, yeah. things like that. Um, how's that been adjusting to... Yeah doing that in the U.S. compared to, you know, school parties and class parties and home birthday parties. Yeah, the birthday parties are quite different here. And I, again, am on board for it. Um, One of the first experiences that we had with a, you know, a home birthday party that's happening during school hours is that, you know, I, I drop off my kid at kindergarten, pick him up. Hey, how was your day? Oh, yeah, we went to, you know, so and so's house. I'm like, okay, like thinking that they're just making it up. You know, no, like I get on the, the school app and I look at the photos and they have literally <laughs> walked to this other child's house, been in it, celebrated the birthday, walked back. I was none the wiser. You know what sure. I'm saying? I think because they keep the parties so low key, it's just mm. very common to just be like, hey, let's all just get 26 year old, 26 five year olds in this house <laughs> and get a cake man. And with that, I'm curious, like, are permission slips a thing God, here? No. Like, do you ever have to sign a permission slip? Supposedly. I signed one at the very beginning of the year, just like a, a blanket one. Just <laughs> your child can go anywhere. Okay, exactly. <laughs> it might be a flight to born home, but like yeah, you can like, literally it really will go anywhere. Might be. And you know what? I'd be like, good for them. <laughs> right? I love they need that. to learn. Yeah, that. that's so good <laughs> for that flight. It's I like, love as long it. as we get this kid back to you, you're good with that, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're like, I'm just sure. Keep them overnight. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so fine, but there's no permission slips. Um, most of the things, that's the other thing too. A lot of the stuff I'm like, did I just not know this because they didn't tell us or did I somehow miss this in sure. like a being an immigrant mom kind of way? Sure. It's usually a, a little bit of both. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. They casually mentioned it and yeah. you just didn't catch it amidst all the yeah. cacophony. But, or sometimes they'll be like, we just felt like leaving the school today. Right. It was we a nice want, day. Yeah. We wanted to go around the corner and grab a hot chocolate. Which, yeah, real true story and very cute. That's, yeah. oh, that's very awesome. Cute. Another difference maybe is in, in child care where mm-hmm. here in, in Denmark you have the, the Vogestua for the real little ones and the Bonhau mm-hmm. for the, the older ones before they go to school. How is that different from the daycare experience in the U.S.? Yeah, so daycare in the U.S. might start at like, well, because there's no maternity or paternity right. leave at like six weeks. And um, mm-hmm. that could go until, um, you know, there's preschool. I think that starts at like three around the time they're potty trained mm. yeah. um, and then school school doesn't start until I think they're five when they start kindergarten yeah. and then they're like off to the races you know yeah. and it kind of goes from a lot of lo- what a lot of my friends have dealt with is like having the kid home full time to school full time and it seems like a that's a hard transition seems like mm. a hard transition so yeah. I do really appreciate like the slow thoughtful transition process that they have here sometimes it's very slow <laughs> but um <laughs> Overall, I, I think that they have the kids, um, you know, health and wellness in mind when it comes to that sort of stuff. And I really do appreciate that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, really seems like a family approach and yeah. a, yeah, like a what's best for the kid. Yeah. Health yeah. and mental. Yeah. 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 I saw I'm thinking. And, so, and at least from what we've seen, it seems like the focus is a bit on like learning how to socialize. Yeah. Because like, what's the point of learning how to read and write if you can't sit still or, mm. you know, being able to be like a little human being in public and kind yeah. of learning those pieces yeah. too. I'm so thankful for that because you don't have any sort of assistance with that in the U.S. Um, and I think maybe some people in the U.S. would be like, I don't need, you know, somebody else to teach my kid mm. these things. That's a parent's mm. job. But it's, I don't know. I just, it's just not, you know, because your kids are going to act different when they're out of the house or mm-hmm. in these certain settings. So for them to be able to be socialized in that way is so helpful. And I just think about how much it takes off of their plate to be taught this at such a young age, learn mm. how to resolve all these issues before getting into the bulk of learning. Like, I think sure. that's such a huge gift. Yeah. 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 Especially for the, the teachers, I'm sure, appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Oof, as those well. teachers are incredible. Yeah. Because then they're entering school with that base of yeah. behavior. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, 
you know, it's really important to kind of understand school and the differences in school that you'll have if you're moving to Denmark. Mm. And um, if you want to learn more about that, though, you'll have to watch this video here where we also talk with Annie and our friend Adrian about what it's been like getting their kids, international kids, into schools here in Denmark and those differences between the U.S. and the U.K. and Danish schools. You can watch that here. Thanks for watching this one, everybody. And thank you, Annie. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And thank hi, you. hi, hi, hi. hi.